right, friends, fans, uh, family, whatever, of Bob's Barn Workshop. Well, guess what little fun project we got planned today. Took my car in for the oil change at the dealer. 2013 Chevy Traverse. And they told me that the brakes were getting pretty thin. And it does have a little bit of a pulse. So, it's a little bit cooler today. We have new shoes, pads, which came with the nice new clips, rotors, AC Delco parts, don't get junk. And uh, we're going to set up and we're going to do this little project today. So uh, I hope you stick around with me and maybe learn a little trick. I'm going to learn as I go along because I don't think that I uh, have done these before. I did the rears a couple years ago. And... Uh, I did see a video on YouTube. It doesn't have any fancy bolts. I think I can get it apart. Okay, let's get all set right. up and do it. Car's all uh, jacked up. Sitting firmly on jack stands. I'm not going to be really under this car. Anyway, I'm going to find what size. Well, that's perfect. Hit the right one right on the bunny. Money. 22 millimeter. Most of this out because you've seen people remove tires before. Sorry, but it's gonna be quick. Alright. Yeah, right. Where I'm at. Alright. Now, I've done a lot of brakes over the years, so we need to get these off. And I heard these were 13, so we'll try that. Now I'll probably have to pry this caliber, so I'm going to get a big screwdriver. There we go. <coughs> She's given. There we go. Lift the caliper off. Now I'm going to have to get. Uh, a big C clamp and uh, take an old shoe which I'm going to pry them out right now these are junk so I don't care if I treat them right oh yeah these are down to next to nothing they're pretty uh, pretty worn out so we're just prying them out um, I'm going to get a bungee and I'm going to push these cart these uh Guys back first, I'm going to spray them down with some silicon lubricant so they can go back in. I'm going to pause you. Let's get in here. All right. The last thing you want to do is drop your uh, caliper and have it bounce on the end of the So I'm just going to latch this guy up here for now and we're going to push this And now in. you got to be patient when you go to push these in. You can't get all crazy. I need to turn these somehow so I can get my seat clamp on a good angle. I'm trying not to get into the brake hose. I'm going to put it under, I think. There we go. Yeah, there you go. This might be a little cockeyed looking. But I got an old shoe in here. And I got this. I've used this C-clamp a million times for this purpose right here. It's a little stiff for some reason. I've got a little lube on her here. is right in the way. Alright, now we're just going to start easing them back in. You can't rush this because you got to slowly push the fluid back to the master cylinder. And these things were 
extend it a lot, so we obviously have to push them in a long ways. And I just push. And this seems to be all the way in. All right, see, that's pretty easy, isn't it? <coughs> get on our brake shoes, do we? All right, now that guy's cleaned up a little bit. We're gonna hang him up. Him. Okay, that's the way he wants to hang. So, I'm gonna put that hook right through there. If I can, yep. these ends are hooked up to the spring. Now that's totally out of our way and not a worry. We don't have to worry about banging into it. Now these next, oh that's got to be clean. Yeah both of my pistons are seized up too so my pins I'm going to have to take those apart and clean them. You see me do that before on other vehicles. Oh, I got PB Blaster here too. That's better for this kind of stuff. If it works. I guess I'm not really getting inside there, am I? These have anti seize on them. I might have done these years ago. I don't know. All right. you to see that I'm doing what I'm doing here obviously now we need to find out what size that is he's bigger than that I think oh yeah those are huge I think it said it was a 22 21 is a 21 a, there's a 21 yep okay there are 21 to hold the bracket oops to get this beast of a rotor off. And so I've got the beast again. Thank goodness for power tools, huh? Right. That's how you do that. And these little Springs. I've got new ones, so I'm just going to take them out. I really should take these to the sandblaster and clean them up, but our next issue is the pins, and they're really not working well. So I'm going to pull it out. Oh my goodness, that is stuck. All right, I think I gotta go get a tool. What we're gonna do. I have brake, why is that thing's gotta? Okay, I'm gonna have to remember that one went in there. I'm going to flush this out, and uh, that one goes on the upper one. Okay, that's the upper, upper, upper one, yeah. All right, PB Blaster. This is just to have a solvent in there of some sort. I don't know of any better way to do it. The boots are in fine shape. They're nice and rubbery. So,
I'm just wiping these off. It's got a flat on it. Okay, so there might be some differences to these. Maybe that's just a clearance thing, Clarence. <laughs> There's really not much I can do to clean that out anymore. I can't get a I don't have any swabs or anything I can get down in there, so I guess I'm just gonna have to of course my hands are filthy. like it doesn't want to come out so I'm not going to bring it out I'm going to get the silicon grease and I have caliper lube I guess that's what I would use don't you think the same thing to the other one. Let's free these guys up. Push it down so the boot pops on. Now there's air caught in there because of the grease. That's what's pushing it back out. There we go. The boot contributes to trapping the air. Pull the thumb thing out with your thumb a little bit. All right, well, these can be put aside for now. I think they said it was a T30. And this appears to be there. Now, that Torx, where the wheel is left turned, is... Uh, I don't know if I can turn it on now. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, cool. Get that on top. It'll be a little easier to deal with. Okay, it's it's right in there. It's just a date disc retainer, and you don't need to put that in real tight or nothing. It literally just holds the brake rotor in place while you work on it. It's out. And my rotor obviously isn't stuck. She's rattling around, so that's a good thing. All right. There goes to the junkyard. I'm planning a trip. Put my grease brush back in its jar so that doesn't get contaminated. All right. So, my next step is to degrease the uh, new rotor. I gotta go clean my hands and stuff, so we're gonna go degrease. And I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I got the rotor cleaned up, the new one. I just wiped it down with um, rubbing alcohol. My backing plate looks fine. Everything looks fine under here. Um, so we're just gonna continue on here. I, I used anti-seize on this before, so I'm gonna do it again. 
just because that came off so easy. And I'm just going to put it right here on this thing to keep it from rusting. Never put NICs on your lug bolts, they say. My son-in-law is a mechanic, and that's what he says not to do, so I'm just putting it on there. And I've already cleaned the rotor, as I said, the disc rotor. So now make sure you line up that alignment screw hole again. And that did have a little anti-seize on it. So I think I'm going to just touch that again. Because that come out nice. It was tight, but it came out nice. Try to put this back in. Well, we're not going to try. We are going to put it back in. I probably should put a lug nut on there to hold that. Wouldn't you think that'd be smart? dandy extendo handle harbor freight three eighths and quarter inch ratchet combo here and you know what it's been remarkably useful okay so I'm just gonna give that a little test just a little pop and that's all I'm doing I'm not gonna reef that down all right so what's the reverse procedure just like we did before we got to put our bracket back on and I know they torque to a very heavy torque level I don't know exactly what it is we'll make it work and I think it's dry that's pretty dry Get the It's funny that the guys that I've talked to about this and seen do this, especially I will give uh, credit to Eric at uh, South Main Auto Repair there. Nice guy. He's made some comments on my stuff and made me made some corrections for me. I appreciate his input. He's a professional. I'm just a hacker here. Scraping the rust out of the back of here. But anyway, this is where you want to put your brake grease. Not between the shoes and the stainless. You want it between the stainless and the cast iron so that the cast iron does not rust and swell. So I'm going to pre grease them. The stainless steel on your little metal brackets is supposed to do all that work for you. So, original bolts. I'm going to anti-seize them again. That's grease. Anti-seize these guys and put them in again. That's in cast iron and that will seize up pretty bad, pretty quickly. Yeah, this is one of the easier brake jobs I've done. A lot of them have weird bolts and Allen screws and all kinds of stuff. And these are big brakes. With that, that I see she just goes on so nice. I think I'm just going to use the elbow torque method on this.
I got a nice long ratchet here. We're gonna give it the old one too. <sighs> Click. Click. All right, that ain't never coming out of there. Don't worry. Now, again, I gotta wipe up my hands. So what these guys do is they have to clip right into here. Just like that. Now, I know the squealer goes on the inside according to the last uh, video I saw somebody do these. And of course, you get four shoes in your kit. Two will have squealers and two will not. Brake wear indicators. They make a nasty screeching sound when they get worn so thin that they're touching the rotor. But that's all they do. So there's an outer, there's an inner. Now, I'm trying to decide. How can that work? Do they go on? I guess they do. There he goes. And they have anti rattle springs that push them back out. Just try not to touch the surface of your pads. Pop over that quite forcefully, just like that. Ain't that clever? All right. So, looks like the solvents have dried up on the driver. I'm gonna just straighten the wheel out a little bit. Gotta go. Should I put an anti squeal on those brake pads? any good but I've always done it. Okay these have to be lined up that way which they're pretty good. Well, piston pins need to be pushed in. There we go. Flynn, baby. I like my rolly cart, but it rolls almost too much. I'm gonna put a little goober on this. Just a little on the tip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Almost done with one side here, guys. I'm gonna put anti-season on the top one. Now, if you looked at those pistons when I went to put them in and lined it up. There's a flat on both sides, and that's the, that keeps it from twisting when you're tightening it up. So you're going to have to make sure those are aligned. 
when you uh, when you uh, you know go to put your caliper back on. Now make sure I didn't get any greasy fingerprints. It'll burn right off pretty quick anyway. There we go. Now we just got to torque those down. I don't think they get a tremendous amount of torque either. From what I've read. There you go. So don't take any of my torque specs. If you're gonna, if you're picky, torque them to what you believe they should be. Don't take mine for uh, for granted. All right. Well, that's all there is to this, guys. I'll show you when I get the other one all put together. You don't need to watch the whole process again. If I run into any problems, I'll show you that. All right. Well, everything's going very well. The other this side went just like the other side. And, uh, I had to lube the clean and lube the, the pistons just like I did on the other side for the caliper sliders. And I'm ready to put the caliper back on. I just clean this with alcohol. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, more. All right. So let's see if we can. I'm gonna hold that in with my toe. Get it flush. There we go. Uh, I probably should put a little more anti-seize on this. Really did a good job of protecting it. I don't know if I did this years ago. We had this car quite a while. We love it. Been one of the better cars we've ever owned. It's good gas mileage. It's a big vehicle. Again, this is a 2013 Chevy Traverse. And uh, we've put 150,000 miles on it almost. We've had it for three or four years now. All right, now again, as I said, this guy don't need to be super tight or nothing. Just holds the rotor, and it, even if it backs out, it's not going to do anything. All right. So what did we do next? Oh yeah, we got the caliper all prepared, and uh, the caliper bracket, I should say. I put a little bit of grease uh, in the areas where. Oops. Okay. I put a little goop on this. I see the tip of the bowl is exposed, so I put it on the tip of the bowl where it sticks out, so it keeps that from getting too nasty. son-in-law did this if I did this before but whoever did it used a lot of NICs and I like that because it sure helps Elbow torque test. 
I've always done cars on my own and I've never had torque wrenches in the past. <sighs> come apart. Nothing's ever come apart, so. Pretty confident that those are tight enough. Alright, now. All right, guys and gals, there she is. The uh, tires are on the ground again. I haven't driven it yet, but I have no doubt. Now, when you do a front brake job like this and you push those pistons back in, make sure that when you start the car, you slowly pump the pedal back and forth until you feel the pressure to pump those uh, uh, pistons back out in contact. Otherwise, your first couple of brake stops will be... Uh, pretty hair raising if you stop at all so uh, remember to do that stay safe god bless we'll see you next time on Bob's Barn Workshop take care well seeing we just did this brake job of course I need to test drive it before I let my wife go so hey let's go for a little ride oh man the windows have been up and it's a hot day don't look at me I'm hot and sweaty and look nasty it does need new wiper blades by the way but I'm going to put the windows down for right now so she gets pumped up a little bit. 100 and, 153, 573 miles on it. We got it with 40, so we've put 110,000 on it. And uh, this has been a marvelous car. We have had absolutely no repairs that I know of other than brakes. I did the rear, and I don't remember doing the front. Maybe we had somebody do the front. Maybe I did the front long ago. Probably just after I bought it. All right, so here we go. We're going to back out of the driveway now. Oh, I got bricks under the rear wheels, but that's all right. I'll go over them. You know what I was telling you about pumping up the brakes? I forgot before I drove away, but now they're pumped up. coming nope oh truck's coming I gotta get going all right oh, I'm sweaty so I feel nice and cool with the windows down anyway we had a pulse and a, a little bit of a growl when you really pump hit the brakes hard but of course, these rotors still have the spiral uh, machining marks on them, so you kind of got to break them in without, you know, you don't want to come out here and do a whole bunch of panic stops and burn them in that way. But she's uh, feeling really good. I love this car. It gets 20 plus miles to the gallon and even higher on the highway, like 23. Uh, and it's a big, heavy vehicle. It's eight passenger, I think. Uh, it has a jump seat in the back for the kids. Yes, it'll take seven. Two in the front, three in the middle, three in the back. Three little ones in the back. Hey, they're, they're kid-sized seats, you know. 
So uh, we have a beautiful day here in western New York. What is it? It's August 8th. Big puffy clouds in the sky. It's probably 75. It's got to be 80 degrees. Going by the bean fields. I don't know if there's a soybean or bean beans or potatoes or what. But I kind of live out in the boonies here. And unfortunately every family farm has a barn on it that's fallen down. People are just letting them go to waste. Got some sweet corn growing here. Now this local place where we get our uh, our vegetables is coming up here on the left. They're very nice people and they always have really great stuff. Maybe I'll, oh I don't have my wallet with me. <laughs> they got sweet corn and I'm a mile from home. Oh yeah, piles. Our tomato plants at home are doing pretty good. There's the chiropractor's uh, office. Got a monster tractor coming here. This is kind of like one of the bigger roads. But anyway, I'll turn you off till we get back home. We'll uh, we'll talk again later. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you can see it, but I got past when I was turning around. Looks like the local hog club. About 10 or 15 uh, Harleys. We have one of the largest Harley dealers in New York State, like three miles from my house. Uh, even though I live five miles out of town and out here in the country, I'm pretty close to the small city. Now look at that beautiful countryside. And don't let anybody make you think that New York State is nothing about all nothing but New York City. 99,000% of it is farmland and rural and good God-loving patriot people like myself that don't go for all that crap in the city. I don't get those big long whippy things on your handlebars though. What the hell is that going to get tangled up with and cause you to crash? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. Oh, look at the ponytail or the pigtails on the one helmet. There goes the boys out for a Saturday afternoon ride. And I'm working on a darn car. All right. Got to wait for traffic here. This is a bad intersection because you can't really see up the hill and they come whipping down there. Shoot across. I got a weird swishy sound in my van sometimes when I start it. No, and I don't mean swishy in that sense. There's Bob's barn. All right. Well, God bless you people. And we're going to make it through this stupid virus thing. I think it's 99% blown out of proportion for who knows what reasons. But there's the home 20, the barn, the old Astro that you've seen worked on many times. The Mustang. Oh, yeah, the fun Mustang. All right, guys and gals. Try not to run over the bricks. We will see you all later. Take care. God bless. Stay safe. God bless America. Yay!